The six techniques that we're going to be going over today are hatching, cross hatching, contour lines, weaving, stippling, and scribbling. It's important for you to know that these are not the only shading techniques that exist, there are more. But these are just my six favorites and the ones that I keep coming back to in my work. As I explain each technique, I will also be touching upon some of the positive and negative points of each. And I'll also give you some examples in terms of specific subjects that I've drawn using these techniques. However, it's important for you to have in mind that these techniques can be combined when drawing one same subject, and it's ultimately going to be up to you to decide what technique you're going to be using. So let's start with the first technique, which is going to be hatching. Hatching is really nothing but sets of straight parallel lines drawn next to each other. It doesn't really matter if you want to create your lines completely horizontally, completely vertically, or diagonally in any angle you'd like, as long as you keep each of your set of lines consistent. And you don't have to be super perfect by any means, but just try to keep in mind the distance that you're leaving between your lines, as well as their direction. In terms of positives about this technique, I would say that the main thing is that it is a very fast way of shading and giving something a sense of three-dimensionality and form. And in terms of negatives, two come to mind. One of them being that you have to have some sort of confidence drawing straight lines freehand. And the second thing is that this shading technique might or may not be the adequate one for you to use when you're trying to shade something more organically shaped or with a lot of curves in it like the human form. It can definitely be done and it's all going to depend on the effect that you're going for, but due to the straight lines, sometimes this technique tends to create very flat planes. Hatching is a technique that I love to use when I have to shade 3D geometric shapes quickly or subjects that are primarily composed of geometric shapes like say a building or a house. Let's move on to the second shading technique which is going to be cross hatching. And cross hatching is very similar to hatching but it involves adding in a second set of parallel lines on top of the first. And the exact same things apply to the second set of lines. It doesn't really matter what direction you choose to draw them in, but once you've started, you have to make sure that there is a certain consistency and uniformity between your lines in terms of the distance that you leave between them and their overall direction. Personally, I use a combination of hatching and cross hatching in a lot of my drawings and I find they go very well together and you can very naturally add in one after the next as you're trying to deepen your values. In terms of positives and negatives about this technique, I would say that they are exactly the same as the ones I already mentioned for the hatching technique. And again, this is not to say that you cannot shade in something like a sphere using cross hatching. It can totally be done, and in the next video I'm going to show you how I use each of these techniques to shade in a more complex subject. What I'm just saying is that you can shade simple geometric shapes like cubes in a very very fast way using hatching and cross hatching, and it requires almost no thought at all. And the two negatives about this technique are A, that you have to have some sort of practice drawing straight lines already, and B, that it may or may not be the adequate technique because sometimes it tends to flatten things out. Okay, so let's move on to the third technique, which is going to be creating contour lines. By using this technique, we can achieve very successful and three-dimensional looking drawings of subjects that contain more curves in them or are more organically shaped, like for example, the human figure or an apple. We have to keep in mind the three-dimensional form of the subject that we're drawing in our mind throughout the entire drawing process so that we can better describe that subject through the use of lines. 
So in other words, you're going to start laying down your lines according to the natural curves and the form of your subject. And as opposed to the previous two techniques, you're not trying to replicate that exact line over and over and over again, but you're going to start shifting that line as your form of your subject changes. So you have to be very mindful about when one plane of your subject turns or transforms into the next. In terms of positive points about this shading technique, I would say that contour lines are an excellent way to create a sense of form and three-dimensionality, especially when drawing or sketching complex subjects with a lot of curves in them. And in terms of maybe something that could be considered a negative point, I would say that you do have to make sure that you keep in mind the form of what it is you're drawing throughout the entire drawing process. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the fourth shading technique that we're going to get into today, and it's going to be weaving. Weaving creates a very interesting visual texture, and I honestly don't use it very much unless the subject really calls for this type of texture. But I really wanted to integrate this technique into the six techniques that we're talking about today because I feel that exploring different types of lines and patterns really helps you sort of open up your horizons and this exploration also helps you prepare and have tricks up your sleeve whenever you're faced with drawing specific subjects. So basically for this technique, what you're doing is drawing shorter sets of lines in different angles so that they look like they are interlocking or intersecting with each other. You can place these lines in a more deliberate pattern or organized way, but personally I love how they look when they are placed in a more random manner. Moving on to the pros and the cons about this specific technique, I would say that the pros are that it creates a very very interesting visual texture, but on the other hand something negative is that I do think that this technique requires some level of practice or experience because since you do have to pay attention to creating a weaving pattern, it may sort of distract you from creating efficient value in your piece, which is ultimately what you're trying to create in order to give your subject an illusion of form and three-dimensionality. In terms of when I would personally use the weaving technique, I would save it for particular places in my piece that require this type of high texture. But once again, this is not to say that you cannot create a complete drawing using only the weaving technique because you can. This is only my preference and my own way of working. Moving on to shading technique number five, and this is going to be stippling. Stippling requires us to create a large amount of tiny dots. And the thing about these dots is that you cannot start getting anxious and try to finish things fast because there has to be a consistency between them. I have noticed that when I'm using the stippling technique and I want to finish faster, sometimes what happens is that I end up moving my pen laterally or horizontally and this creates a line or a tick effect. And the thing is that when you start creating those tiny short lines, there isn't a consistency anymore because you're, you're creating dots, you're not creating lines. So the consistency is broken. In terms of the pros and the cons about the stippling technique, I would say that something I love about it is that it lends itself perfectly to create any kind of subject, any kind of drawing, whether it's something more geometric or something more organically shaped. And I would say another pro about this technique is that you have a lot of control with it just because the marks that you are making are so small and they kind of force you to take your time. On the other hand, something negative about this technique is obviously the amount of time that it entails to create a finalized piece with it. 
The sixth and final technique that I'm going to be mentioning today is the scribbling technique. And I actually use quite a bit of scribbling whenever I am drawing settings, indoor settings or the outsides of houses or landscapes or anywhere in which plants are present. Scribbling allows you to very easily create the visual sensation of plants, flowers, or trees. And to successfully create a scribbling effect, I really recommend practicing relaxing your hand and varying the amount of pressure that you set upon your paper. Try not to think of any particular pattern or shape. Just let your hand go and allow it to form short lines. They don't all have to be the same length, but have them go in different directions, creating different loops, overlapping. Just let your hand move in whichever way it feels like going in. In terms of the pros of this technique, I would say that it's very fast and it's a very effective way of creating the optical illusion of natural elements like leaves, plants and trees. I also really enjoy using the scribbling technique to create quicker value studies and drawings of all different types of subjects, whether it's a still life or a portrait or a landscape or anything in between. The only negative aspect of this technique is that you can very easily go overboard just because your hand is moving so freely. So I highly recommend kind of taking a step back and making sure that you're stopping whenever you have to. So to put these techniques into action, we're going to be shading simple outline drawings of cubes with each of these techniques. And of course, to do this, we have to pinpoint a light source. Our light source for these exercises is going to be located to the top right. So for this very simple exercise, I'm going to be creating three different values using each shading technique by itself. And since in this case, we have our light source at the top right, then the plane of our shape that is facing the light source is going to be the lightest value. The plane of the shape that is opposite to the light source is going to be the darkest value. And the third visible plane of our shape is going to be the mid value. I'm going to be using these same principles as I fill in my six cubes.
So as you can see, I have managed to successfully create a variety of values using each of these shading techniques to give simple geometric shapes a sense of three-dimensionality and form. And the commonality or the thing that links these techniques together is that basically the closer you set your marks together or the less visible area of paper you have amongst your marks, the darker is going to be. And the more amount of white space or paper you have between your marks, the lighter your value is going to be. All right, guys, that is it for today. I hope that you found that useful and that you come by next week for the next lesson about pen and ink drawing. Let me know in the comment section below which shading technique you like best. Also, let me know what you find hardest about drawing with pen and ink so that I can touch on that subject in a following video. So don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate you being here and checking out my channel and see you next Friday.